Okay, good morning everyone. We are getting ready to talk about another hurricane on the way, Hurricane Florence, which is rapidly intensifying in the tropical Atlantic. I have Henry with me and Tom, we're going to be talking about this impressive storm. Henry, take it away. Yeah, it is impressive and um, certainly the hype is going to go crazy over the next several days uh, as the uh, computer models are just really starting to uh, show some interesting weather. Now, you know, as, as, as I've been trying to tell people, I'm cautious about the hype, okay? I know, I know people are going to throw the computer models out there and start showing things and everything else. But, you know, yesterday the European model was going out to sea with it. Now today it's coming into the Carolinas. GFS was going out to sea. Now it's bringing it in. It looks like a monster on the models. You know, we got plenty of time to look at this thing uh, over the next couple of days here. So I caution everybody on the hype with this storm and try to, you know, be realistic with it. Yeah, I agree. Tom, what do you think about this situation? Well, you have to take baby steps. Yesterday, it looked like it was going out to sea. Now, you know, it's uh, the ensembles have moved more toward the East Coast. I mean, there's going to be a point that it's either going to turn and go out to sea, or it's going to slip in under a trough uh, to, the, to its Northeast in the building ridge over the Northeast US, if it slips under that, it'll come toward the US. And then if it does that, then we have a whole other series of problems. But right now, we just have to kind of watch it from day to day and see if we see any trend. Here's what concerns me, guys, in that I'm looking at this right now and it has blown past the forecasted intensity levels. It's a major hurricane, 120 mile per hour winds. Why did the models change? Because it's, because the intensity of the hurricane is altering the 500 millibar pattern. The more heat it puts out in the atmosphere, the more likely that ridge is building to the north. And that is why the model guidance is shifting to the west. Because the other models earlier that were all going west all had this storm very strong. And the European, not so much. Well, looks like the European might be wrong for once. No, I don't know if it's going to be wrong or not yet. <laughs> you know, I mean, we look, look what happened with Gordon. You know, last week Gordon was supposed to be this puny little thing in the Gulf of Mexico. It turns out to be a very strong tropical storm uh, coming into Dolphin Island. It, you know, even even yesterday, the uh, the 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 bus on the models and the um, even the NHC track was everything was well east of there uh, on the track. So you know. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I totally get what you're saying, is that the intensity of the storm, of course, is in question. Mm -hmm. My point is that the stronger this storm gets, the more likely it's going to help to build that ridge to the north. So yeah. if you have a major hurricane right now, and you want it to stay out to sea, you want this hurricane to weaken. And right. Stay yeah, that's a that's a problem with these big hurricanes. When they get the, you know, they get this big, they're like a freight train. They start plowing straight east. Yeah, uh, they actually change the environment around them, you know, yeah. uh, straight west, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, west. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they create their own environment. And, yeah, it, you know, the height anomalies in the uh, southern Canada and northeastern U.S. are going to be uh, way above average as it is. So if for some reason Florence can make it toward the U.S. coast, uh, I, I don't like to look at September and see big anomalies because usually you run into big problems when you have that. And it's been several years since we've seen a welcoming pattern like this over the eastern United States in September. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's an ominous thing down the road. But as I say, there's going to be a decision point for this. You can see how good uh, hurricane model intensity forecasts are. Already uh, this is Category 3. Yeah, Henry, I believe you uh, had some graphics that you Yeah. Wanted. So first of all, let's put up, there's, um, can you see that now there, Steve? Uh, let's see. Put my desktop up so you can see my graphics. So just put me, put it on me. So. Uh, I think I see it. Yeah. I think I see it. Okay. In any case, uh, here's Florence. Gordon's already well inland over Alabama. And um, I think what really got everybody all shook up this morning uh, was a couple things here. First of all, the this was this is the track uh, as of zero Z, okay, taking it all out, winging it out to sea, and then all of a sudden everything started changing uh, 
with the EPS model showing a spread coming in toward uh, the coastal areas, okay? Then things got even worse after that with the European coming in showing the storm over top of the Carolinas as a 993 millibar low, which would be a major hit on the Carolinas. And then you had the GFS model coming in showing 932 off of the Delmarva, which is, and then it swings up through New England as a major hurricane. And so that's what all the people are, everybody's going crazy about on the models. Even notice another hurricane, a little tropical storm down here in Texas at the same time. Um, I did see somebody on Twitter, one of the, one of the mess on Twitter did, did talk about the, um, the ocean feedback problem the GFS has. So, you know, uh, I mean, obviously if there, it was a 932 millibar, <laughs> that would be pretty bad. It would be a disaster, you know? See, my whole, my whole thing, as I've been talking about for the last several weeks, is, uh, and Gordon might be my, uh, <clears throat> my problem, is that these areas up here in Pennsylvania have just been inundated by heavy rain. I mean, we, I mean a lot of people have had heavy, heavy rain across the eastern part of the country, but here in Pennsylvania, we've just been hit hard by heavy rain and flooding and constant flooding. And now Gordon's going to come through and produce heavy rain again. I've already warned people across my area that, you know, the groundwater table is at record highs right now. So any heavy rain that comes is going to cause flooding. And hopefully this thing doesn't come in like the European says and decide to park itself up here across Pennsylvania and cause a disaster flooding. So that would be, that'd be, <coughs> like Angus. That'd be very bad. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, the intensity models are off, are not really doing real well. Well, I guess they had a category two now, so. They're already busted. They're already busted, right? Yeah. So that doesn't work. <laughs> no, well, it, it does an excellent job of illustrating just how mm -hmm. tough it is to, yeah. to forecast the intensity of these hurricanes. And <clears throat> the intensity of the hurricane is, is influencing the overall track. That means that we need to understand that, that we need to understand that the volatility in the models is tied directly to that incredibly high volatility mm -hmm. in the track. Basically, what I would suggest for people out there is prepare for a, for, for at, at the very least have your supplies ready. So that way, even if it misses, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, we have plenty of time. We have a week to go before it gets here. And I think you'll start seeing track models start to switch a little bit. Uh, NHC's model is trying to hook it to the east of Bermuda. I think they're going to end up hooking it more toward uh, south of Bermuda on their uh, five-day graphics. And, you know, I know what to say. Right now, I just would just, it's a watcher. Just watch and see what happens and try to stay out of the hype. You know, I know, I know the, uh, you know, the, the, the non-meds out there are going to start throwing around all kinds of words that we've heard over the years and stuff. And, you know, so. Right. Because if you go to climatology, mm -hmm. um, many uh, Cape Verde systems have tried, but very few make it all the way to the U S for one reason or another. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I did notice about Florence, I looked at some of the uh, analogs of where Florence is in the Atlantic right now. And if you go back in history, there have been no hurricanes where Florence is now that have actually made it all the way across to hit the U.S. I, you know, every situation is different, but just to, you know, kind of keep the dogs from howling too loud, we, then uh, we, we do have to keep an eye on it. But all, always these chances of it hitting the U.S. are uh, less than missing the U.S. because thought, it has an awful long way to go. Tom, I thought Andrew did that. I thought Andrew made it all the way across. I think that Andrew was a little bit south of this one. It was a lot farther south. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, but I'm, I'm in the position that it is now because Florence is a pretty high latitude storm. And usually when they get to this latitude, they have trouble making it all the way. Not to say this one won't. Getting back to Henry's point earlier, with those big 500 anomalies, uh, big heights in the eastern U.S., any storm, either this one or the following ones, that do make it, uh, we're, are going to slow down a lot. They're not going to be moving much when they get to the East Coast. So one, we might, and again, this is all speculation, if it can make it near the U.S., we could have days and days of storm surge and, 
and all that kind of stuff on the East Coast. And if it makes it all the way in, and then we could have days and days of rain. And of course, uh, parts of the Northeast are already been inundated. So I'm just going to reiterate the point that Henry made. So there could be a lot of problems uh, downstream if this storm can make it all the way into the U.S. I remember Gordon, Gordon is, uh, you know, priming the well right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's going to prime the well across, the, mm -hmm. across parts of the Appalachians and Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Mid-Atlantic states. Baltimore, Washington, Philadelphia, New York City. So, yeah, just quick on Gordon. Yeah. Right, the, the moisture in Missouri, Illinois, uh, the Ohio, mid Mississippi Valley to the Ohio Valley is going to be uh, intense rainfall there. And then as we move into early next week, big high pressure trying to move offshore, but that rain's going to kind of creep in, as you said, into Ohio and Pennsylvania. We can have some very high rainfall totals in those areas as well early next week. Yeah. Absolutely, guys. Yeah, yeah the, the, the problem with. Uh, the problem with Pennsylvania is, Tom, is that it, it's um, a, a, a cold air damming situation. I know it's, it's hard to say cold air when it's like hot as all well get out it's outside. It's a ridge, yeah. It really is. A high comes down and it dams up against these Appalachian Mountains, and then you pour this tropical moisture over top of it. That's why the models are trying to say, you know, here, look at Pennsylvania. I got this damming going on. I'm going to pour the tropical moisture over top of it. I'm going to pour as much rain out of it as I can, you know? So anyway, that was a pretty intense high over the Northeast. Uh, at least uh, the Northeast will have a nice weekend ahead of it. But as you say, uh, loads of tropical moisture is going to be flowing into that area. Yep, absolutely. All right, well, it's been a great chat, and I think that uh, the storm's going to get pretty interesting. But as always, we're always ahead of the storm. So great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you later.